Hello guys, uh, welcome back. Welcome back to Chinta School of Statistics and Data Science. I am with a pretty cute problem. Uh, the cute problem, by cute problem, I mean uh, the apparently the algebraic constitution of the problem may look a bit daunting, um, but it's not. So it's asked that the two functions given, and it's asked that fx, uh, the two functions fx and gx are given within the 0, 0,1 cos 0, 0,1 square. And it's asked that what is the area enclosed between these two graphs, not these two graphs, but the inverse of these two graphs. So that's where the daunting nature comes. You know, we have must have forgotten that how to draw the inverse. But we will use a pretty um, cute idea of um, the geometry of inverse to solve this problem to you, uh, with you, and also we'll leave a food for third problem so that you enjoy it to the fullest. Okay, so let's get started right away. So, so let's try to draw the function. It's all about curved sketching. And if you try to draw the function out here, let's say this is the, let's call it the xy axis. Let's avoid the uh, upper wala uh, thing. So if you observe this, then this x axis, let's say this is a y axis. And uh, let's say this is the zero comma one interval. And the corresponding zero comma one interval is this. So essentially, it becomes a square in the whole dimension. Zero comma one, zero comma one. The two functions are given are f x is equal to half into x times x plus one, and f of uh, g x is equal to half into x square times x plus one. So let's draw half into x times x plus one. So it's a quadratic function which has roots at zero and minus one. So uh, if you try to draw a quadratic function which is positive sided, so it must look like this, something like this. Okay. So quadratic curves looks like this. So therefore, uh, the function must look like this. Let's say like this. Why? Because at zero it takes the value zero. At one it takes the value one. So it must go through 0, 0,1, 0, 0,0 and 1, 1. And similarly, it's the same goes for GX. The GX, but observe the GX is a bit uh, tricky. GX, how do you draw GX without drawing FX? See, observe that X square is less than X, for since X is less than or equal to 1, right? So therefore, GX is less than or equal to FX because the same thing is multiplied half into X plus 1. So GX goes below this. But it also goes through the point 0, 0, 0,0 and 1, 1. So this uh, the red curve is a gx1, and the black curve is the fx1. That's pretty beautiful. This is the idea of curve sketching. You're kind of incorporating in this whole thing. Now comes the most beautiful part of this. That is the So this is the line y is equal to x. Right? So if this is the line y is equal to, so now there comes the most beautiful part. So if fx, so now draw the line y is equal to x. So there's a beautiful geometrical argument behind this. Let's not go into that. But if you have a function, let's say, let's exactly the example, it is the power x like this. E to the power x is not like this actually. I think e to the power x is like this. Now, if you draw, what is the uh, inverse of e to the power x? It's log x, right? So, how to draw the log x? It's nothing but how to draw inverse of a function. It's simple, nothing but we reflect it around the y is equal to x line. So it becomes like this. And you know, log x exactly looks like this, right? The reflection. So reflect to draw the curve f inverse of f, you just reflect it around y is equal to x. Another example. Another example is that x, 1 by x ka inverse is 1 by x. So if you draw the curve 1 by x, and why is it a x line? It's nothing but looks like this. 
So if you reflect one by x in along in along you know uh, along the y direct line, it looks similar, exactly similar, the same. So therefore, one by x curve, the reflection, the inverse inverse image, the curve is the reflection on, uh, along the line y is equal to x. So now the reflection along these two lines, the reflection along these two lines, the reflection along these two lines will be just nothing but reflections along y is equal to x line. And therefore we get, therefore we get that, therefore we get that this red line to reflection is this, and this blank line to reflection is this. So it's asked to find you the area between this, the inverses. So this is nothing but the G inverse of X. And this is nothing but the F inverse of X. So the area between the curve, let me draw it for you. The area between the curve, let's say this, the area between the curve, this is same as is the area between the curve, this. Right? It's the same because it's just nothing but reflection, right? Nothing but reflection. So therefore to find, therefore to find the area between this curve is, this two curves, the F inverse and G inverse, same as finding the area between the curves, the F and G. So you transfer the problem to something tactable instead of finding the F inverse and G inverse. That's the beautiful part of curve tracing and drawing here. So how do you do that? It's very simple, it's integration now. So the area between this curve is nothing but what? Integration zero to one, duper one is FX because it's bigger, minus integration zero to one, inch one is GX, DX, right? So that's pretty easy to find out it's integration. So that's left to you, how to walk it around x into x plus one, dx minus integration zero to one, x, x squared x plus one. That's pretty easy to find out. Okay, I will calculate it for you. Half integration, so it's one by three plus half minus one by four minus one by three. I hope I've done it correctly. X squared, yeah. So this one by three, one by three cancels, and this is half minus one by four, it's one by eight. The area and the curve is one by eight. So you calculate this, this is how you calculate it. The main portion is the drawing of the curve and essentially find the area between F inverse and G is same as the area between F inverse, F and G. So that's the pretty, the most beautiful idea over here. I hope you enjoy this problem, guys. I hope you like this idea of reflection along Y is equal to X trying to find the curves of F inverse, of an inverse of a function. If you enjoyed it, Please do like, share, and subscribe, and comment, and hit the notification bell icon for getting our contents, our videos at the list. And let me share a, try to share a different, a similar food for thought problem with you. So now the question is that, is it always true? Is it always true that the area between A and G, F and G, is same as the area between F inverse and J inverse? Rather, if in the same thing, if it was something like this, let's say like this. Let's say another function. That these are the two f and g. Will the area between the curve remain the same? What do you think? So think about this problem. Will the area between the curve remain the same or not? Think about this problem. And uh, Share it in the comments, write it down in the solution, Google Drive, share the link in the comments. I will check it for you, we'll grade it for you. And yeah, thank you for stopping by and watching the whole video. And thank you for your core patience. I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Take care.